Hello friends and welcome to another online video of Ms. Hoskins AP Environmental Science. This section is on population and community ecology. So population size is affected by um, what we call two things, density dependent and density independent factors. These are factors that influence population size and it's either an independent or a dependent um, factor. In 1932, Russian biologist Huaz conducted a set of experiments that demonstrated that food supply could control a population's growth. Uh, sounds kind of obvious to me. But anyway, he monitored a population of two species of paramecium. These are little aquatic arrow-shaped organisms that when you cut them in half, they have um, regeneration qualities. Very cool. All right, so eventually, um, living under these ideal conditions in a tube, each day he went and added a constant amount of food. And that constant amount of food showed that the paramecium initially experienced a very rapid go growth, but over time their growth rate began to slow. So this scientist suspected that paramecium population growth was limited to food supplies. Because eventually a, a population size where he reduced the amount of food began to um, grow at rest. It plateaued out based on the food supply that was there. So to test his overall hypotheses, he conducted a second experiment which he um, doubled the amount of food that the paramecium got and um, both species of paramecium showed this extreme rapid growth in, pop in, in population size and then this rapid growth slowed over time. Now no matter how you look at this what this shows is that a population has a maximum size of no matter what, no matter how you feed it. So one of the predictions from this particular scientist resulted in confirming that food is what we would call like a limiting source. A limiting resource is a resource that a population cannot live without, such as food, that occurs in quantities that are lower than the population would require to increase its, its size. So for a limiting resource to decrease the population, or the size of the population, it would also depend on that limiting resource too. So factors such as food that influence um, individuals' probability to survive its, to its reproductive years are what we call density-dependent factors. Density-dependent factors affect an individual's probability to survive and amount of reproduction differently depends on uh, whether the population is going to be large or small, like its initial starting population. Alright, so a density independent factor has the same effect on a population, you know, it's, um, it's probability that it will resurvive or that it will survive to be reproductive regardless. But when it's density independent, that is completely irrelevant of how many species or what its population size is initially. So um, like a tornado for example. If a tornado comes through and comes through a forest and knocks down and kills every single species of hemlock, regardless of how much hemlock was there or not, the, the, this independent factor has taken out the species, whether it was two trees or ten trees. And so we would call that a density independent factor. So when we take a look at Gauss's experiment in 1932, um, you can see that the two paramecium populations had the same type of plateau, whether they had a high food, food supply or a low food supply. And as you can see, that one of them just increased the number at which they grow, but eventually populations plateau. When you take into account two different species, under a low food supply condition, the population sizes of these two species of par paramecium, they initially increased rapidly, but then they leveled off as their food supply became limited. When twice as much food was provided, both species attained a population size where it was near, they were nearly twice as large as they were originally, but once again, they leveled off. Someone you might be more familiar with besides paramecium um, might be herring. In the United Kingdom, 
it's usually kept at a certain temperature um, due to <clears throat> the, the flowing conditions and the weather conditions um, of Earth, as we've talked about before. But new, the United Kingdom can have a particularly cold winter, and that basically freezes the surfaces of ponds. When that happens, that makes amphibians like and fish um, inaccessible to birds that depend upon waiting um, to catch their food. So with their food supply no longer available, heron would basically increase their risk of starving to death. So regardless of whether or not the herring population is low or high, you freeze the pond, they all die. So weather would be considered, what do you think? What type of density dependent or density independent factor 